What this shows here is the annual rainfall, the annual precipitation of Washington State. And here you got more than 180 inches is the purple coating. Well, look where you get that, right on the edge of the Olympic Mountains, right? And then the light purple here, yeah, and you get more of some of that dark purple right on the Cascade Mountains. Well, that's because the wind is blowing, and when it hits the mountains, it has to go up in altitude, so it's going to rain more the higher it goes, because that's going to make condensation happen. But look what happens when you go around to the other side of the mountains. You have less rainfall. Well, that's the rain shadow. That's what we're going to be getting into next. What happens in Western Washington, though, is that the moist air off the Pacific Ocean and then the Cascade and Olympic Mountains push the air up, 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 and the rising air cools and condenses. Okay, write that down. If it's white, you got to write. That's some of the few notes you have to take today. Write it down. If you need more time, pause the video, write it down, and then we're going to move on. Okay, take a look at this right here. That area right there. This is one of my favorite places on Earth. This is the Olympic Mountains, the Olympic National Park. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's on the other side of Puget Sound, right? you got to take the ferry to get there or drive around Olympia. Uh, the Cascades are over here, and the same thing, same thing happens in the Cascades, but it's a little more dramatic in the, uh, in the Olympics. Uh, the Olympics is a rainforest. It's called the temperate rainforest. Now, that's a little different than the tropical rainforest they have down south, uh, because the tropical rainforests have so much diversity of life. Well, there's, uh, you know, a lot of life here in the Olympics. It isn't as diverse as what you get like in, say, the Amazon rainforest, because this whole area, this whole region was carved out by glaciers during the ice ages, right? And so it was under a big ice sheet, so life had to migrate back in from the last 10,000 years. But anyway, the, the life per square foot is just amazing with all the moss and the, all the insects and different life forms that they have there, okay? So the Olympic rainforest is the wettest spot in the USA. And if you ever go there, it's just so covered with moss and just every square inch is covered with life. So that's the wettest spot, the highest uh, rainfall area, over 180 inches per year in the United States. So write that down. Uh, because of that, this is now that I don't know who this lady is, but the picture here is this is the largest uh, uh, Alaska white pine in the continental U.S. Uh, so the largest cedar is in the Olympics, the uh, largest Alaska white pine and the largest Douglas fir, some of the biggest uh, trees. Now, these things aren't as big as like the sequoia, the redwoods in California, but they're huge. And so uh, Western Washington you know, we, with the rainforest in the Olympics, uh, here we get, go. This is kind of typical what it's like, where it's sort of overcasty and drizzle and rainy. This is the Ho River, which is one of my favorite hikes. I love this. Again, what we have in Western Washington here, uh, a lot of rain, especially in the Olympics and along the Cascades. Uh, but, you know, it's if it, Washington is well known for having a lot of rain. But you know what? In the summertime, we are as dry as anywhere else. This is a little secret about Northwest uh, weather. In the winter time, this is how many average monthly precipitation in the Pacific Northwest. Get a lot of rain around October through March and April. But once you get down into the summertime, it dips down in July and August. Oh man, it hardly ever you know, rains uh, in July and August. It can occasionally, but it's pretty rare. So we get really nice summers here. Uh, but this is west of the Cascades, right here. But what about east of the Cascades? Here's east of the Cascades. You never get all this rainfall. And yeah, of course, it's dry in the summer there too. And the answer, uh, the question then is, why not? Why don't they get a lot of rain in uh, the other side of the Cascade Mountains? Well, when you go over there, you drive across to eastern Washington, go over the Cascades, go over Stevens Pass or Snoqualmie Pass or whichever, 
and it's desert. Hardly any rainfall at all. This spot here, I don't know if you've ever been there when you go over the bridge across the Columbia River and then there's a turnout, you can go. It's a really nice view. I recommend next time you drive over there on your way to Spokane or wherever, wherever Yakima, wherever you happen to be going, uh, pull off and take a look at the area. This is an amazing place. And that's the Columbia River. It's a desert. Well, here's why. East or West uh, Washington, the desert is caused by the rain shadow. What happens when the warm, moist air goes up like this, all the rain gets dumped out. So then when it goes back down, it doesn't have any moisture left. Write that down, rain shadow.